Good evening. Just past the midpoint of the 20th century, the average fan of the hapless Washington Senators felt this way about the legendary New York Yankees. So naturally, the wives felt this way about their husbands. And since the average senator fans, conversation was usually limited to some variation of this. Take your eye off the ball before you swing at it! Damn Yankees! The average marriage around Washington works something like this. Six months out of every year, I might as well be made of stone. Six months out of every year when I'm with him. I'm alone. Six months out of every year, he doesn't take me anywhere. Six months out of every year when I play cards. Solitaire. The other six months out of every year, we are hardly ever seen apart. But then the Washington senators take over my place in his heart. Six months out of every year, I might as well be wearing crepe. Life is just an awful bore from which I find no escape. was November when I said that I would be his mate. It was December. I reasoned he would be the greatest husband that a girl had ever found. That's what I reasoned. That's what I reasoned. Then April rolled around. Strike three, four, four, walk around all tie the score. Slide all double play. Yankees win again.
That does it. Did the Washington senators win, dear? Thrown out at home. I know the feeling. Maybe next time. Damn Yankees. I'd give anything to lick them just once, anything. Don't forget, old boy, I've got fridge tomorrow night. Can you manage by yourself, or should I put something in the fridge for you? If we had just one long ball hitter, just one. Joe, did you hear what I said? Yeah, sure. Look oh. out your back, are you all right? Oh, are you coming up to me? I'm too keyed up, old girl. Hey, sit on the porch a minute. Oh, I can't. I'm studying bridge. It's really hard. This man Gorin doesn't like you to count on your fingers. <laughs> Oh, good Lord. It's just a ball game, old boy. <laughs> Now there's an arresting idea. Oh my God, you scared me. Where'd you come from? I was designing an Edsel. Huh? Skip it. I'm just a man who agrees with you. One long ball hitter, that's what the team needs. Do you live around here? You might say that. So you don't like to see the senators in last place either, huh? Well, they might still turn it around. Except for those damn Yankees. Yankees. Yeah, I know. Makes you just furious, doesn't it? Yeah. You smell something? Yeah. Something burning. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> that's me. I overheat when I get excited. So tell me, you played some ball yourself, huh? Well, yeah. Not anymore, though. Boy, it's been years. 32, to be exact. You were really something back then, weren't you? I believe they were scouting you for Kansas City. You still have your glove and your spikes. They're under your bed. How did you know that? Never mind. I'm here to offer you a proposition. How would you like to be the greatest ball player in all history? <laughs> Mister, I can't even bend over and touch my toes. Name's Applegate. Now try it just for fun. <laughs> uh. My God, that's amazing. How did you do that? That's nothing. You see that cat over there? Yeah. It isn't yours, is it? No. Isn't it? I find it very effective on head waiters. <laughs> you see, I'm handy with fire. Say, wait a minute, Applegate. Isn't that like old Nick, old Scratch? Isn't that another name for the depth? What are you doing here? I come and I'm called, very much like Roto Rooter. You see, I hate the damn Yankees almost as much as you do, so I thought I'd drop in and make you famous and answer one of your most secret desires while I'm at it. Oh, wait just a minute. Don't think I'm the please, kind of guy... Please, I'm every inch the gentleman. You can ask anyone. I never go anywhere unless I am invited. Now, by my count, you invoked me 32 times in the last innings of today's game. Go to hell. Go straight to hell. Damn it to hell. Ring any bells? Listen, I don't know what the gag is. Anybody who cares about the senators in Bowerfield just... Look at yourself! So you finally flipped your lid, huh, Joe? <laughs> what are you doing out here by yourself in the dark? Sister, where have you been? Oh, I'm taking mambo lessons. <laughs> oh, ooh, ooh. I'm working on the mambo for the hospital benefit. Who are you talking to? Uh, nobody, just a little... Oh, you've got Senator Depression on the brain, Joe. <laughs> Me too. Seventh place. Damn those Yankees anyway. You know, 
when Meg and I were kids in Hannibal, Missouri. I hated those Yankees even then. <laughs> and I was right, too. <laughs> Night, Joe. Tell my sister I'll see her at Ritz tomorrow. All everything her. First the senators, now the bombo. Hannibal, Missouri. And they live there on purpose? Say, she couldn't see you. Smoke and mirrors, kiddo. Smoke and mirrors. You see, I can't afford the wrong kind of reputation, you understand? What are you talking about? Look, I like baseball. I like the senators. And my friend, I like you. That's why I've chosen you, the most dedicated partisan of the noble Washington senators, to be the hero who leads them out of the wilderness to the championship. Well, the senators are in seventh place. Yes, I know. But you're going to inspire that team to greatness. We'll call you Hardy, Joe Hardy. You'll be 22 years old. They'll add a new wing on that baseball museum at Cooperstown dedicated to you. They'll call it the Hardy Shrine. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Leave everything to me. But my job, my wife. Sacrifices, Joe. Isn't this the very opportunity you've always wanted? Yeah, but then what? Suppose the senators win the championship. Can't I just pick up where I was, return to my wife and my home? Let me guess. It's a Wonderful Life is your favorite movie, right? How did you know? Oh, gee. Joe, it must occur to you that I have plans for you that don't involve baseball. Don't worry about it. You're going to be in great company. Military figures, opera tenors, used car salesmen, the American Bar Association. What about an escape clause? A what? Well, in my business, in real estate, we have what's called an escape clause. Well, this isn't real estate, and I don't make deals. With me, you either get immortality or acne, nothing in between. No deal. I've got my wife Meg to think about. Oh, wives. They're more trouble than the Methodist church. Okay. What kind of an escape clause did you have in mind? Well, let's see. The season is over on the 25th of September. Let's say at midnight on the 25th, I can still walk away if I want to. You people are so hopeless. Midnight. Why do I always have to be around on the stroke of midnight? What do you want? Vincent Price, too? Here, let's make it interesting. You can leave on the 24th, one day before the end of the season, free and clear, but midnight. That's way past my bedtime. I much prefer a civilized nine o'clock sharp. But if you decide to play in that final game on the 25th, then you're in for the duration, if you know what I mean. No oddball surprises? You won't pull any tricks? If I pull any so-called tricks, the deal is off. And to leave my wife out of this, don't involve her. Won't lay a finger on it. She's neutral territory. Is it a deal? Is that all there is to it? It's a contract, Joe. It's not the Miss America pageant. Hey, now that's a terrific idea. Call Bert Parks. <laughs> anyway, the team really needs you, so let's get going. I want to leave a note for my wife. No. No notes. A clean disappearance. Now go in and get your glove and your spikes, and I'll get the taxi. Oh, God, I love this job. <laughs>
when you awake and I'll be gone. Can't tell you where I go. It isn't fair, I know. But trust in me and carry on. Goodbye, old friend. My old friend. There's something I must let you know. I haven't said it much. I guess I've lost my touch. But my old girl, I love you so. Now I know it hasn't all been rosy. We've had squabbling days when tears were brought about. But in a moment or two, we would fill and coo and never even knew what we fought about. He'll come back to you again. So sleep your sleep, old girl. Our love will keep, old girl, till then. Cabs waiting, meters running. Pow!
Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, you guys. What kind of little league you call that, huh? Can't you even hang on to the ball, but Christ's sake. Oh, Nate, I remind you, bums, this is the major league. Minors are not admitted without their parents. And I ain't your parents. It's just a string of bad luck, Mr. Van Buren. But it's got to change. I found a four-leaf clover in right field this morning. True, I should have been watching that line drive, but still. <laughs> now, I'm coming to that, Oz. I'm coming to that. Look, Sohovic. <laughs> what sign is this? Hit and run, I know. Right. You're still up at bat. I take Okay, the count's three and two. I don't do nothing. How can you do nothing? If I wipe the take signal, watch what follows. You go for it! Ah, yeah, I knew that. But you didn't know it last night that damn near cost us the inning. Well, look, it's not that I'm dumb, Benny. Nobody said anything about you being dumb. Exactly. It's just Yankee fever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've well, had it for months. What's that, Rocky? Well, we're playing the Yankees. We tense up, Benny. I sometimes figure, what the hell's the use? Smokey, you can't think like that. You're pitching to those guys. But they ain't human. Yeah. I look at that plate. I'm looking at Billy Martin. Mickey Mantle, Yogi Berra. I'd really like to get Yogi Berra's autograph. Oh, and it ain't that with chicken, Benny. Yeah. Yeah. We don't make the same goobers when we're playing in Kansas City. Yeah, yeah, Benny. There's something else with Yanks. And so are you. I've seen it. But your mental state is all off in left field. Bomber, I've seen you banging the fences till you drive me crazy. Oh. You played three games with a busted hand, and that took guts. But there's something else you need. There's a new dawn out there, guys. And you're right at the beginning of it all. It takes skill, sure, but there's something else, too. Something this country is just beginning to discover. Something bigger. You gotta have heart. Oh, you really Heart. When the odds are saying you'll never win, well, that's when the grin should start. You've got to have hope, mustn't sit around and mope. Nothing's half as bad as it may appear. Wait till next year and all. When your luck is batting zero, Get your chin up off the floor. Come, mister, you can be a hero. You can open any door, there's nothing to it, but to do it, you gotta have heart. Miles and miles and miles of heart. Oh, it's fine to be a genius, of course, but keep that old heart before the car. First, you gotta have heart. A great slugger, we haven't got. A great pitcher, we haven't got. A great ball club, we haven't got. What do we got? We've got heart. All you really need is heart. When the odds are saying you'll never win, that's when the grin should start. No, you're getting it. We've got heart. We're humming. Hum, 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 hum. That's the hardy thing to do. Ho, ho, ho. Cause we know our ship will come in. Hum, hum, hum. So it's ten years overdue. Ho, ho, ho. We've got heart. Miles and miles and miles of heart. Oh, it's fine to be a genius, of course. 
I'm looking for a Mr. Van Buren, the Washington manager. You're right here. The Yanks are a swell bunch of fellas. Okay, Gloria? Now move along. Name's Applegate, longtime fan of the Senators. See my secretary, will you? I'm busy at the Say, moment. Say, uh, you listen to me. I've been beating the bushes looking for talent on your behalf. Now I want you to shake hands with my protege, Joe Hardy. 
He's quite a boy with a bat in his hand. Listen, Mac, I said I'm very busy. If you just let me hit a few, Mr. Van Buren. Hey, that's a good idea. The only thing that separates you boys from the top of the league is a little hitting. And a little pitching. Some fielding, a couple of runs, a few RBIs. Sadly, she's got a point. Now, my boy here hits at a country mile. What do you got to lose? Okay, fellas, suit up. So, Hover, get this kid upstairs and find Smokey for me, will you? Thanks, Mr. Van Buren. You have no idea. All my life, all I've ever wanted was to Tell him to watch. throw him a couple. I'll be out. Come on, kid. It's like a dream come true. All these darn cleats. I can hardly get them on. You're a smart man, Mr. Van Buren. I've always said that. Oh, no, you don't. No agents, no personal coaches, no amateurs. That's right, Benny. You tell him. You! Stay here! As if I didn't have enough to do. Come on. anybody could hit like that. How could he? Where in hell would he be keeping himself? Smokey, put a little something on it. Benny, that was my fast, fast, fastball. I promise. I know. I recognize the sound it makes landing in the upper deck. Throw one faster. All right. Good stride. Great swing. Nice ass. Come on! You hit the ball pretty good. Thanks, Mr. Van Buren. I gotta say, I love the Senators. So do I, and there's so few of us left. Gloria. Honest, Mr. Van Buren, I can hit better than that. I know I can. Of course you can, Joe. You can do anything you want. What position you play, kid? I want to play shortstop. I mean, if that's all right. Whatever you say, Joe. If that's all right. But would you let me hit one more, please? With my shoes off. What's wrong with your shoes? I don't know. They seem too small or something. Give me everything you've got. Hey. Without his shoes? He's going to hit in his stocking feet? What is this? How do you like my boy, Mr. Van Buren? Did he kiss that horse hide right out of the park? Did he get the fat end of the bat on that pill? Bye-bye, baby. How about that? Not bad. Not bad. What's his name? Where's he from? The Midwest someplace. What's his name? His name is Joe Hardy. Not bad. Not bad. Willie Mays can't hit a ball that far. Come on. We might look him over. Maybe send him to one of our farm clubs for a little seasoning. A little seasoning? If Ty Cobb walked in here looking for a chance, you'd send him to Little Rock for three years. That's exactly what's wrong with baseball. Now, where in the Midwest, Mr. Ware? Missouri, I think. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hannibal, Missouri. To Alex Smokey! The longest ball I've ever seen in my life. Well over 600 feet for sure. I think I swallowed my chewing tobacco. Hire him! Yeah. You mean it? You I made it! I made it! I'm gonna play ball with these guys! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! 
Do you mind? Mr. Applegate, how can I ever thank you? Oh, we'll find some way. I'm sorry, but you guys have no idea what this means to me. You just don't. <laughs> and you have no idea what this might mean for us. Yeah. Our luck's beginning to change. I can feel it. The clouds are lifting. The dawn is breaking. Yeah. Just like in Snow White. Come on, kid. Let's get you signed up. <laughs> so what's the real story on this kid? The usual. You need talent. You need timing. And, of course, it helps if you work like the devil. Yes. Maybe that's how they learn it in Missouri. Boy, Wait. I hate to think what he'll do with the right shoe. Hey, I'll tell you what he's gonna do. What? He's gonna win us a ball game. Wait, right? wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see, let me see. Barefoot ball. <laughs> nah, too Mark Twain. Uh, the Hannibal Hero. Uh, now oh, that sounds like a sandwich. Uh, Hey, that's it. Shoeless Joe. Shoeless Joe Hardy. Hey, Shoeless Joe. <laughs> <laughs> From Hannibal Moe. Shoeless Joe. From Hannibal Moe. That's it. That's the line of the right one. That's the one we took. And that's my story, fellas. And I have a feeling... It's only the beginning! Yeah! Who came along in a puff of smoke? Shoeless Joe from Hannibal Moe! Strong as the heart of a mighty oak! Shoeless Joe from Hannibal Moe! A jelly to be having him! Shoeless Joe from Hannibal Moe! Just for the future's looking grim! Shoeless Joe from Hannibal Moe! Came a long, long way to, to be with us today! With arms of steel like Hercules! Oh, oh, yeah! Feet as fleet as Mercury's! Push! Yeah! He'll fight for us, do right for us. He'll be a beacon light for us. He shoots us up from Hannibal Mo. Go, 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 go. Go like a bat out of you know where. Shoot us up from Hannibal Mo. Strike at the foe, let him know you're there. Shoot us up from Hannibal Mo. Come on, Joe. Shoot us up from Hannibal Mo. Come on, boy. Shoot us up from Hannibal Mo. Come on, boy.
Ladies and gentlemen, batting for the first time for Washington, number 33, shortstop, Joe Hardy. this publicity, you're starting to sound like a prima donna, Joe. I'm batting 482. Why can't they leave it at that? I mean, why poke around in my private life? Because as a brand new star, you're hot copy. As a man who goes through with a bargain, you leave something to be desired. I followed you last night and the night before. Is there anything wrong with walking around my old neighborhood? You know how I feel about home and wives. It's right down there with mom and apple pie. I love baseball, Mr. Applegate but I'm homesick. What do you want me to do? You just need a date. Call my service. You wouldn't believe my Rolodex. Thanks, Mr. Applegate, but I've got someone. And don't forget, you don't own me till 9 o'clock on the 24th. But we do know what happens then, don't we? What's that? Gotcha! Not Come with that! You're not going anywhere. No one's been able to get a single interview with you since you went on that cereal bar. We're not letting you out of our Come on, I don't give 
God damn where we hold this press conference. Come on. You wiseacres all know me. I'm Adam Welsh, the owner of this goddamn ball club. I've taken a hell of a lot of heat from you guys over the years. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, now we've got ourselves a winner. And I damn well expect you to treat him like one. Because he's going to be Rookie of the Year, mark my words. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Any no, questions no, at all, Joe? Fire away, miss. Thank you. Then will you please explain to me how nobody in Hannibal, Missouri, has ever heard of a Joe Hardy? How are you spelling that, Miss Thorpe? Well, H-A-R-D-Y, for God's sake. How would you spell it? Well, if you did your homework, you'd realize the name's been Americanized from the old Aztec spelling, C-H-A-R-D-Y-E. <laughs> pronounced Shard. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Do you think Washington could win the pennant? Yeah, when I win the Pulitzer. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? What's so funny about Washington winning the pennant? All we have to do is win games. That's what I want to hear, God damn it. <laughs> okay, so we're just barely out of the basement. But stranger things have happened. I mean, you don't really know these guys. They're some of the best men playing baseball today. We're starting to play like a new team. We're moving up. We're climbing. You haven't seen anything yet. There, well, put that in your newspapers. Why don't you? If Joe Hardy says it can happen, then by God, it can happen. Sure. We'll have that pen and sewn up on the 25th, or my name's not Adam Welsh. But that's the last day of the season, isn't it? Yep. I believe we've already discussed that. Then I just bet we'll have it in the bag by the 24th. Whoops. The devil is pissed. It's me. What do you mean, who? Who else gets to leave? <clears throat> Get me Lola. Hello, Lola, you better come right up. No, now, Lola, I'm in no mood to wait. <laughs> to our nation's capital. Your place, where are we? My place, the basement of the Senate. <laughs> what are you doing lounging around? Well, I finished my assignment in Chicago. Chicago? The 80-year-old meatpacker. Oh, him, yes. I got him to embezzle half a million, then I blew every bit of it for him at the racetrack. His wife left him. He took to drink. I told him I was through and pointed to the window. And out he went like clockwork. How high? Twenty-two stories. You couldn't get the penthouse? There was a convention. Mm. Do you want me to try the Empire State on this next one? I'm not sure how to work it. Maybe a straight seduction job. It's this new boy I got a hold of. But I'm so angry at myself I could split off a... Of I let this cornball real estate genius talk me into an escape clause. An escape clause? Joan of Arc didn't get an escape clause. I know, I know. Ah, oh, Chief, are you all right? I got a lot on my mind. I've been under a lot of strain these days, Lola. You try having lunch every day with Joe McCarthy. <laughs> anyway, this is really big. A mass torture deal like the Inquisition. 
I've got thousands of Washington fans just drooling over the hope that the senators can win the pennant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Steve, that's gross. That means heart attack, suicide, apoplexy. Mm, just like the good old days. Yeah, but this Joe Hardy isn't human. He wants to go back to his wife. For all I know, he's sneaking over there right this minute. Do you mean Joe Hardy, the new baseball star? The very one. Gosh, he's under 60. This could really be fun for a change. Lola, there isn't a home wrecker on my staff any better than you. But do you honestly think you can land him? We never had one like this before. He's cagey, he's square, and he's faithful, for God's sake. Oh, come on, Chief. You know I've got what it takes. Don't make me brag. I took the zing out of the king of Siam. I took the starch out of the sails of the Prince of Wales. It's no great art getting the heart of a man on a silver platter. A little brain, a little talent with an emphasis on the latter. I made mint meat out of a soup, young farmer. I knocked the fight out of a night when I pierced his armor and I'll bet I could have set every male in the early data. A little brain, a little talent with an emphasis on the latter. You've got to know just what to say and how to say it. You gotta know what game to play and how to play. You gotta stack those decks with a couple of extra aces. And this queen has her aces in all the right places. I've done much more than that old boar, Delilah. Of a millionaire, there is no trick Getting some hick who is cool Just a little warmer A little talent, a little brains With an emphasis on the former Split up a home way up in Nome, Alaska of every wife down in Madagascar. Ask me why weak men will die from these strong men simply shudder. A little brain, a little talent with an emphasis on the latter. You gotta know just what to do and how to do it. You gotta know what tea to brew. And how to brew it. You've seen the sign that says George Washington once slept here. Well, though nobody spied him, guess who was beside him? Bring on that boy, he'll be a toy. Hello, love. Just one more cake, she can erase. With that old buffalo, what's my plan? Same as with any man. I'll use the standard pattern. A little richa. And a little vada. With some emphasis. On the...
nothing to do from noon to nearly midnight. No one to talk to. Completely alone. I now look back on that as the happiest day of my married life. But, Nancy, there's no point in being angry. I'm not just angry. I feel confused, betrayed, sad all at the same time. Well, it could be worse. And what if he didn't walk out? What if he was abducted by Martians? What if he's lying in some ditch somewhere, just blithering out of his mind, like in that movie? Sister, please, this isn't helping. Joe's gone, and somehow I just know it's my fault. Well, you can't just sit here staring at cold meatloaf. You've got to get your mind on something positive, like our hospital benefit. I'm not the committee type, you know that. And I just can't bear to see anybody these days. Oh, who's that now? You get it. I want to check the paper for the senator's lineup tomorrow. Oh, just a second. Oh. <laughs> uh, I thought you were the paper boy. No. I came about. Um, that is, uh, someone told me you had a room. You might be willing to rent. Me rent a room? Yeah, that's what they said. Uh, some nice fella down at the corner. I'm looking for a quiet place. Well, you certainly found it. But I'm afraid there's been some mistake. I wouldn't be any trouble. I can promise you no, that. No, no, I'm sure you wouldn't. But that's not really the point. I'm not renting, Mr. Uh, Mr. Joe. Joe Hardy. Joe? Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? You'll have to excuse me for a moment. But he'll come back to you again. All I said was that I'm not so sure it might not be such a bad idea. I'm her sister, sister, if you follow my drift. And you would be... Joe. Joe Hardy! Hardy! coming back. How can you be so sure? Oh, because he's a big baseball star, that's how. And if he knows how to hit a ball farther than anybody's ever seen before, then he knows Joe will come back. Joe! Oh! Would you consent to appear in our hospital benefit? If we could produce a genuine star, it wouldn't matter how bad our mambo demonstration Sister, turns out. I don't even you think I'm going to Fire inspection. Open up in there. Fire inspection? But how can that be? We're checking to see that there aren't too many people living in each house. Fire hazard. Let me in. Now, just a minute here. Back off. I don't need any lip out of you, buddy. <laughs> Is this your house, lady? In mind. Is he him? I mean, is that your husband? No, oh, no. No, this is... Well, this is... Her border! What's this to you? Who 
are you, the wicked stepsister? I am her sister, if it's any of your business. And anyway, I don't live here. Well, according to my report, this house is owned for two adults. No borders. Where's your husband? You tell me and you can have the house. No, thank you. I think real estate is a little overrated these days. You got a permit for this here border? I've got proof of ownership someplace upstairs. Oh, come on, sister. I could swear I've seen him someplace. <gasps> I think he plays bingo at the Congregational Church. Okay, what do you think you're doing here? You can't monitor me, Mr. Applegate. I'm not doing anything wrong. You want to win that pennant? You want to keep getting that ball, kid? To be honest, I'd like to be left alone. Sir. That's what Adam always used to say. <laughs> Look, you're just tense. You're overwrought. You need to relax and have a few laughs. Now, there's someone I'd like you to meet. I'm not interested. Really? Well, I went to considerable trouble, Joe Hardy, not to only give you the chance of a lifetime, but to also introduce you to one of the world's most fabulous women. Oh, oh, watch it, watch it, stop that, they're family. And another thing, I don't want you involved in any so-called benefits. This is strictly a sports deal. It does not include appearances on American Bandstand. Now, don't get me mad. Nuts, look at what you made me do. I'm warning you, Joe Hardy, no personal appearances. Do you hear me? I can't stand charity. The very thought makes me boil. If I ever calm down again, I'm going to choke your neck. Right now, I'm going out to cool my jets. <laughs> oh. Here's the deed, mister. Where is he? He went out to smoke. Phew, messy. Time to take the old rubber glove to that oven of yours. Mrs. Boyd, about your hospital benefit, I'd be proud to help. Oh, well, I'm not really involved, but you want to... Oh, Joe Hardy, you really are America's hero. I... It... Oh, yeah. oh. oh, you see, our Mongo demonstration, maybe you can say that, too. <laughs> I'm no dancer. I'll get the rest of the team, then. The rest? Of the team. The rest of the team! Oh, interesting. We're going to smell out this benefit for sure. Oh, I'm going. Well, I'm ahead. Thanks for dinner and thanks again, Joe. Hey, if I'm going to dance with you and the senator, I'm going to stop by Arthur Murray's and tell him where he can put those little footprints. Oh, woo! Mr. Hardy, about the... Can I help with the dishes? Are you kidding? If my husband had ever said that, I'd have passed out. Did you ever ask him? Oh, well, you know, he had his baseball game, his senator. He never noticed. Maybe not, but, um, maybe he didn't know you wanted help if he didn't ask. How'd you get so smart without being married? Um, my parents are a lot like you. Married at 20, you know? First love. They love each other a lot. I know they do. But, um, once, when they were separated, my dad told me how he felt. A man doesn't know what he has until he loses it. When a man has the love of a woman, he abuses it. I didn't know what I had when I had my old love. I didn't know what I had till I said goodbye, old love. Yes, a man doesn't know what he has till it is no longer around, but the happy thought is Whatever it is, he's alive. May someday, once 
can't re Hey, bad news for you, Applesauce. It's gate, Miss Thorpe. Applegate and what's bad? Well, your boy played great out there today, but... <laughs> but his batting average won up four more points. He's batting 524. No buts at all. It's all just hunky-dory, isn't it? Except for my research. Apparently, there isn't a single old Aztec living anywhere in Missouri. What do you suggest I do now? Try Mayan. Ancient Mayan, spelling under X, I believe. X? Like an exit. Vamos! Get out! Or just get married and make some nice, deserving young man absolutely miserable. <laughs> Joe, we show those yanks today, or what? Joe, come on! Hey, guys! We take that doubleheader tomorrow. Perfect! Yeah! <laughs> you will. I feel it in my bones. Say, Joe, did you notice the charming young lady sitting in the box with me? Yeah, I saw her. She'd like an autograph. I'll just bring her in. But I don't have any pants on. She'll feel right at home. <laughs> Lola! Joe, please be a little patient with her, will you? Her English is not very good. Mr. Applegate, I've got kind of an appointment at home tonight. I know you don't like it, don't but... Don't be you... ridiculous, Joe. All I want is for you to be happy. And speaking of making you happy, I'd like you to meet a very big fan of yours, a visitor to our country, Miss Lola... Uh, banana from South America. How do you do? Mr. Tor. Hi, Kate. How do you do? Happy to meet you. Oh, likewise, I'm muy sure. <laughs> Wow, that was close. Five minutes sooner, she'd have had a shot at the naked guy. <laughs> Wait, Mr. Applegate, because I told Vince, I... Uh... Sure, I'm uncomfortable with Lola, Che. Yes. No. The truth is, it is Lola who doesn't know how to speak to a, a big a hero like a choo-choo. Gesundheit. Hmm? Uh, pardon? In my country, you are as famous as, um, Xavia Cougat. <laughs> What country is that? Uh, just South America in general. I get around the muy mucho. Um, look, Miss Banana, I gotta get going. Lola, Cho. Just Lola, please. I think we should become to know each other quite well. Okay. Lola. Mm -hmm. Cho. You are so sexy when you say that. <laughs> Lola. <laughs> oh, to make me shiver all over. Some men that says to me things like, I love you. You are so beautiful. I could die for you. And it means nothing. But you say. Lola. <laughs> then suddenly, I feel like a little me. Right. Um, look, Miss Banana, I gotta get going. I have kind of a date tonight. Oh, without my autograph? Oh, sure. Where do I sign? At this. Um, what do I write? To Lola. To Lola. My biggest fan. My biggest fan. In all of South America. South America. Including Colombia. Colombia. Venezuela. Yeah. I can't do this. Rachel! Do you like a dancing musica? I used to play the drum a little. No! My favorite is boom. Boom, boom. <laughs> boom, 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 boom.
thank you. <laughs> hey, Joe, maybe we go to my place, huh? I'm not too sure Mr. Van Buren would say about that. He would say, too lucky boy. I really should go home. We have this rule. We're supposed to be in bed by 11. Well, that's okay, Joe. You come to Lola's, you can be in bed more quick than that. Oh. Seriously, we do have this rule. Be a good boy, Joe. Like Lola tells you to do. Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets. And little man, little Lola wants you. Make up your mind to have no. Resign yourself, you're through. I always get <laughs> what I aim for. And your heart and soul is what I came for. Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets. <laughs> no use to fight. Don't you know you can't win? Sure, no exception to the rule. I made it easy the bully, you fool. Give in. Give in. My
Now tell me, Cho, isn't this like cold beer on a hot day? Lola? Yes, Cho. If it were you, I promised to come home to. You'd want me to, right? If it were me, Cho, you wouldn't leave home in the first place. Seriously, um, this is about Meg. Meg? You're really sort of amazing and everything, and I honestly wish I were two different people. But I'm not. I'm one. And he's married. What in the world kind of turn of the century burlesque do you call that? Give in! Give in! Bizet cut that out of Carmen, honey. I was wrong. He is different. But you said you could land him. You let me down, Lola. You realize you're going to have to pay for that, Lola. Oh, come on, Chief. All I need is a little time. Time. Time is what we don't have. If I don't find some way to stop him, he might well have this pen that's sold by the 24th and still be able to get back to that wife of his, and I'll look like a nice guy. Oh. Let me think. Savannah Rolla, Scabies, Scandal, Shif Shifty McCoy. That's it. That's perfect. Who's Shifty McCoy? He took a bribe in the Mexican League about four years ago. He threw a game and they banned him. I've been saving him for a special occasion, and this is it. I can easily pass off Joe Hardy as Shifty McCoy and blacken his name so bad you can tar roofs with it. So much for the pennant, so much for the wife. You get over here. Chief, what are you doing? It's payday, Lola. Come on. Bye for now, Lola. Ha, 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 ha. Whatever Lola wants. That's what Lola gets when she screws with the devil. <laughs> Much polish. 
We need Joe. They're one game in front with two days left in the season, and everybody's saying is Shifty McCoy. I don't think he's overly concerned with our benefit. Oh, without Joe as our celebrity, we have no benefit. Without Joe, we have no senators either. Yes, but where could I possibly find a substitute celebrity this late? I'm looking for a reporter, Gloria Thorpe. Has anyone seen her? Sorry, not me. Are you anybody? Not a soul. All right, boys, line up. We're doing it again. Now, let that be a lesson here. Come on, Lola, let's get cracking. Oh, excuse me. You aren't with Arthur Murray by any chance. Well, you know, I've been with practically everyone else. But he's really old. It's just that... I wouldn't hurt my sister's feelings for anything in the world, but that Mambo number of hers, well, it's, it's living hell. Trust me, she's got a ways to go. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to bother you. Oh, Meg. <laughs> oh, fellas, have you seen this? Are you Meg Boy? Oh, sorry, do I know you? No, not really, but I've seen your husband. You have? Oh. I guess it never occurred to me. No, 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 it's nothing like I that. I don't want to be rude. You'll have to excuse me. Counseling the love loan, are you? You don't pretend to have any real experience, do you? Oh, come on, Chief. You said yourself she's neutral territory. Have a... Heart, bad idea. Cardinal rule. Never feel sorry for anybody, remember? Now start looking for Gloria Thorpe. I've got my scandal cooking, but unless she presses for hearing before the commission, it's just a lot of talk. Let's get going. We've got work to do. Move it. Do your head, Joe. Even if the Shifty McCoy thing is false, you're all over the newspapers. If we win tomorrow, we've shown up the pennant on the 24th, just like you predicted. So keep a low profile. No personal appearances till after tomorrow. Mr. Van Buren, I promised these people I'd give them a hand, and I'm going to. If I hide, I'll just end up looking guilty. Has anybody seen Meg? Five, I mean, Mrs. Boyd. Joe, come on, you're a killing me here. What is it? A jelly roll and a tummy uh. ache. And a left, right, kick the dog. Uh. And a right, left, kick the cat. Uh. And a duck walk, duck walk, duck walk, duck walk, duck walk, duck walk. Hey, Gloria, this ain't the locker room. Oh, that's it. Now I lost count. What are you doing here? I'm looking for Joe Hardy. I'm going to get to the bottom of the Shifty McCoy business or I'm going straight to the commissioner. Can't you see we're in the middle of a dance rehearsal? If Joe is Shifty McCoy, then I'm Dumbo. Ah, woman of the year. Nice scoop, Miss Thorne. Apple juice. It's Gate. It's Thorpe. You know, I never would have put that Aztec thing together with Shifty McCoy of the Mexican League if it hadn't been for you. But I just can't figure your angle on this. Well, it's just a rumor at the moment. With nothing behind it, would they call a commission? Would you testify? Call me. I'll get the commissioner on the phone. Where's Joe? We can't find him. He's somewhere around here, that's for sure. What a hell of a mess this is. The baseball commissioner's called a hearing for tomorrow morning. If Joe can clear himself, fine. Otherwise, and we are... And he insists on appearing at this benefit tonight. A sitting duck, for Christ. Day. Once this is over, he can be admitted to the goddamn hospital for all I care. What the hell's wrong with him? Ah, it's always the same. They win a couple of games, they think they're Ty Cobb. One of these days, one of these bonus babies is going to start holding us up for money. Never! This is baseball, not business. <laughs> inspired. I'm suddenly inspired. I just got the nastiest idea for 1994. <laughs> Come on, Lola. Please, Miss Banana, it's nothing personal. But you're a friend of Mr. Applegate's. Not really, Joe. I just work for him. Look, when I first met Mr. Applegate, I was the ugliest woman in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm really 248 years old. Wow. I don't believe it. Okay, 250. Look, Joe, whether you know it or not, you need a friend. I'd like to be your friend. Maybe you're right. I don't get Mr. Applegate at all. What does he want? Joe, listen. If you clinch the pennant tomorrow like you promised, you could still walk away scot-free. No one's ever done that before, and he's not about to let it happen. I gotta go. Oh! Oh, Joe, thank God you've come. Sister just twisted her ankle, and we don't have a 
now he's at the show. There you are, Joe. The baseball commissioner's called the hearing before the game tomorrow. We got to get you ready to testify. No celebrity, no finale, no benefit. This is just the worst day of my life. I couldn't even pull off the stupid Mambo thing. Wait a minute. I know someone who's great at South American dances. You've got to be kidding. Oh, uh, do you think you could help us? Well, it's just not something I've really ever tried. You mean dancing? No helping. Come on, Joe, let's go. There's practically no time to plan your defense. Oh, you better go, Joe. Don't worry about us. And no matter what happens, we believe in you. I just can't walk out on these people. You look like you could do anything you really wanted. Anything. No, Mrs. Boyd. You're one up on me in that department. Lola, please. For me? Friend? I'd offer you the services of these ball players, but I might as well face it. My boys don't want to do it. Oh, yeah! <laughs> well, who wants to dance? I do! I'd like to take a moment to thank you all for standing by us these past few days. We know it gets pretty crazy between what happens on the ball field and what happens in the newspapers. And although I promised the guys I wouldn't tell any jokes up here, I also told them that I would thank you for being the greatest fans any team ever had. But tonight's not about baseball. It's about all the great people who work here at the hospital and all of you who contributed so generously to it. We had some entertainment planned tonight, but our choreographer twisted her ankle doing the mambo. Boy, a hospital benefit. Was she with the right crowd or what? As for the team, we have a good friend with us who knows a lot about this kind of pain and she wants us to try her prescription. Here's Miss Lola, Banana, and her, well, but! Who's got the pain when they do the mambo? Who's got the pain when they go? Mm. Who's got the pain when they do the mambo? I don't know who. Who needs a pill when they do the mambo? Who needs a pill when they go? Mm. Who needs a pill when they do the mambo? I don't know who. Do you? Someone must be sick for that beat. Or stepping on everyone's feet. But if everyone's feeling okay, why don't they just stay away when the music carries them away? Who's got the pain when they do the mumble? Who's got the pain when they go? Who's got the pain when they do the mumble? I don't know who. Do you? Who's got the pain? I don't know who. Do you? Who?
because I happen to value the good name of baseball more than a victory for my own team. That's why. And there's something strange about all this. So don't blame me. And as a result, Joe goes before the commission tomorrow, and we don't know whether he'll be cleared by game time. What kind of victory you call that? But what's the difference? It's all publicity for you. You better wise up, Benny. This could be big trouble for you. Well, I got a story for you. Ugh. Whether Joe plays with us tomorrow or not, these guys are going to play red hot baseball, and you're going to cover it from the only place left you welcome. Where's that? The bleachers. God, that benefit was fun. She is some teacher, you oh, know. Yeah, where's the beer? Somebody go quick and hey, party. Yeah, hey, where did Lola go? Somebody find her while you're at it. Hey, oh, what are we going to do with these costumes? I'm going to wear mine in the off-season. Oh, Lucy. Ay, ay, ay. baba Hey, hey, hey two more days, one more win, and we can wear whatever we want. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What if they nail Joe? I saw his wallet. I don't think he's got a social security card. Yeah, oh, no, no, no friends. No, no. A permanent address. Hey, Lola's a close friend. That's good enough for me. Yeah. Hey! Just in case you didn't hear what Gloria just said, the fun's over. And so's the honeymoon. No more dancing, no more clowning around, no more nothing. Now we... We... Maybe playing without Joe tomorrow. And if we have to, we have to. But that means getting a hell of a lot tougher than we've ever been before. So you better start doing what Joe does. Nothing. Now get your gear and get home. And get to bed. We got a big day tomorrow. Benny's right. Look what clean living did for Joe's game. No drinking, no late hours, no women. We got to emu, emu, liquor. Well, we got to clean up our act, all right? Remember the rules. Hey, we got rules about women now? No, rules without women. Look, no matter what happens to Joe tomorrow, concentration will get us through. Hey, no, we got to concentrate, guys. Yeah, no beer, no distractions, and no women. No late hours, no good luck charms. No women. We gotta keep our minds from the game. We gotta think about the game. The game. The game. We gotta think about the game. The game. The game. Booze and broads may be great. No, they're great. They'll have to wait while we think about the game. There was that waitress back in Kansas City. Built for comfort, dumb but pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Man, her perfume short, it smells sweet. Got her up to my hotel suite. Yeah. 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 She kills a pint of gin, more or less. The lights are low, and she slips off her dress. Yeah. 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 But then I thought about the game. The game. The game. Oh, yes, I thought about the game. The game. The game. So I got the lady high. I just left her high and dry because I thought about the game. You did. You got about... There was that Pullman car that I got lost in on a sleeper out of Boston. Yeah. Yeah. Compartment doors all look the same. They're walking one and there's this same. Yeah. Yeah. Blonde and stacked <laughs> and absolutely bare. <laughs> Nothing separating us but air. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then I thought about the game. The game, the game. Oh, yes, I thought about the game. The game, the game. Though my heart said stay for tea, all I said was pardon me, because I thought about the game. He thought about the game. When a chick is you the eye, remember, abstain. Come on, you must think about the game side. Come on. When you die and some some rye, remember, free brain. If you're losing at crap, and the clock says it's 11, and suddenly each row you row, comes up a seven, and you're in the kind of dive for men or men. Be polite, say goodnight, you shall be in bed. 
by ten. When your mother bakes your cake, remember steak and oh. oh. When you're kissing till it aches, remember don't give in. Every rule we shall obey to be sure. Cause you win, we got to stay good and pure. Good and pure. With operating side by side with yeah. yeah. We're at a gap three miles from Philly. The night is warm, the skies are dilly. Yeah. Yeah. So I suggest we sleep beneath a tree. No. With no one there but Oz, Chick, and me. There you go. Under a tree. Four minds with a single thought. I look at my girl. And I look at mine. And then, with one bell, but then they thought about the game. Oh, yes, they thought about the game. The game, the game. True, I win it one and all. We will see you in the fall. But for now, we've got to stall every day. And think about the game. Think about the game. Fine, Meg. I just think it's better for you until I get my name cleared. God, I don't know how I got into all this. You don't think I'm Shifty McCoy, do you? I know you're not. You're not the least bit Shifty. You're Moody. Now, if they called you Moody McCoy, or maybe even Dishes McCoy, that I could believe. I'm serious, Meg. I've made up my mind. I'm going to see Miss... Someone first thing in the morning. I've just got to clear my name before I disappear. Disappear? What on earth are you talking about, disappearing? You've got a pennant to clinch and the World Series to win. Do you know how important that is? Do you? I didn't think you liked baseball. I never took the time to try. There are a lot of things I'm beginning to think I should have done differently. But I've heard enough talk about disappearing. I can tell you that much the less a lifetime, maybe two lifetimes. Don't worry about me, Meg. Take care of Joe, yourself. Listen, I... I don't know how to say this, but... Lola kind of got me to thinking. My Joe, maybe he hasn't disappeared. Maybe it's something else. Do you think I'm losing my mind? I get angry about him, really angry. But then I see you, talk to you, and somehow I get all mixed up. What's happening to me? I gotta go, Meg. Oh. There's nothing wrong with you. Nothing in the world. Sometimes we're not supposed to know everything. You've got to listen to your own instincts, you know? I'll bet. I'll just bet your husband is nearer to you than you can imagine. Joe, is everything okay? Everything's going to be fine, Meg. Get some sleep.
discuss rudimentary psychology, do you think this noble, upstanding, young Joe Hardy is going to walk out on the very men he's worshipped all of his life? Escape clause or no, never. Maybe. I'm just saying I never met anyone like him. Well, that's your limited circle of acquaintance, my pet. See, if you'd have grown up with real killers like I have, Attila the Hun, Marquis de Sade, Anita Bryant, <laughs> you wouldn't be so impressed. This kid is tapioca pudding. Well, I won't forget him, that's for sure. All I have to do is stall that hearing long enough to keep him out of the game tonight. Of course, without Joe, Washington to lose. That'll drive the bookmakers crazy. Then tomorrow, with just one game between him and the pennant, he'll have to be the hero. He'll play the game, and he's mine. Ah, what a morning. What a great day. Thumb screws for everybody. Well, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. I said I'm sorry for him. Is that so? You know, Lola, I really hate to pull rank on you, but I have observed of late a certain laxity on your part. Have you forgotten the first axiom I ever taught you? Now get down and give me a hundred. Never feel sorry for anybody. Never feel sorry for anybody. Never feel sorry for anybody. Now who do you suppose that is? Come in, Joe. Gosh, Mr. Applegate, I had no idea you lived right beneath the Senate. <laughs> Reassuring, isn't it? Huh? Skip it. Lola, knock it off. How about paying a little respect to the world's most famous ball player? After all, this is a very big day for him. Coffee? It's cold. It's hot. Would you like to have a little? No. Eh? Okay. Thanks anyway, Mr. Applegate, but it doesn't look like this Joe Hardy's going to be making the Hall of Fame after all. And what is that supposed to mean? I've come to tell you that I've decided to exercise my escape clause at 9 o'clock tonight. It should be easy to clear up the Shifty McCoy business this afternoon with enough time to play in tonight's game. And if I concentrate, we can rack up enough runs before nine to clinch the pennant. I'll just make it. Yay! Oh, yay! He'll just make it. Goody, goody. And then what are we going to do? Change back to Joe Boyd in front of 40,000 fans? No, I can slip into the locker room at the last minute. No one will ever know. Well, we've thought of everything, haven't we? What about the World Series coming up? Don't you want to try for the brass ring? I've thought about it a lot. I don't like what it's doing to me. It changes you, all this attention. There are more important things in life than being a hero. <laughs> there are more important things in life than being a hero. How I would love to work that into a needlepoint pillow. I guess I've learned a kind of lesson, so I might as well leave while I still can. With, of course, the pennant under your arm. I owe those guys everything. I can't let them down. Of course not. I just didn't want us to have any misunderstanding. No, we would no, not us, no. I've had a terrific time, Mr. Applegate. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Goodbye, Lola. I want you to know, I really respect you. Never surprised anybody, never surprised anybody, never surprised anybody. Goodbye, Lola. I want you to know that I really respect you. I think he's got you confused with Eleanor Roosevelt. Now, snap out of it. We've got work to do. You're going to be one of today's star witnesses. Follow him. Don't leave him out of your sight. I've got to drum up enough other witnesses to keep him out of the stadium tonight. So much for his escape clause. You know, Chief, maybe I'm just... Lola, in case you missed it, we are in something of a jam. Now, you're going to show up at that hearing. You're going to convince them that you are Mr. Shifty McCoy or the next escape clause you hear about is you back to Providence looking if memory serves like the model for Old Dutch Cleanser. Now hop to it. Move it. Move it. You just can't get good health these days.
Whenever I'm from time to time depressed And a trauma wells and swells within my breast I find some pride deep inside of me As I fondly walk the lane of memory I see Bonaparte, a mean one, if ever I've seen one, and Nero fiddling through that lovely blade, Antoinette, dainty queen, with her quaint guillotine, <laughs> those were the good old days. I see Indian dragon, an empty covered wagon, when scalping the settlers was the latest craze. And that glorious morn, Jack the Ripper was born. Uh, <laughs> those were the good old days. I'd sit in my rocking chair, so peacefully rocking there, counting my blessings by the score. The rack was in fashion, the plagues were my passion. Each day held a new joy in store. Was anybody happy? Locals, I see cannibals munching a missionary luncheon. The years may have flown, but the memory stays like the hopes that would ash when the stock market crashed. <laughs> Those were the good old days. I walk a million miles or more for some of the gore of those good old so contented when the prisons were invented and the ones with the gallows set my heart ablaze. I was burning with pride, hmm, the day Bonnie met Clyde. Uh -huh. Those were the good old days. I dozed by the fireside, dreaming of cyanide, never a worry or a care. And how can one measure the infinite pleasure of dreaming of the electric chair. Some people found it shocking. I work alone. So these two Jews, no, you can't do that. Ooh. Well, it's a goddamn hard trick, lady. So this woman goes into the grocery store. She goes over to the man behind the counter. She says, mister, do you have nuts? He said, no. She said, do you have dates? He said, if I had nuts, I'd have dates. <laughs> think I'm crazy. You're paying. <laughs> Did you
Did you hear about the Polish bobsled team? They came all the way from Poland to go to the Olympics. They won the gold and had it bronze. <laughs> man is in bed with his wife. She is lying on her back. He is rubbing her stomach. As he rubs her stomach, he's whispering to her, I love you, I love you, I love you. She said, lower. He said, I love you, I love you. <laughs> this old man was standing in the middle of Central Park, sobbing like a child. Ha, 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 ha. And a police officer walks by and said, can I be of any assistance? The old man said, there's nothing you can do, officer. I'm 87 years old. I lost my wife a couple of years ago. Shortly thereafter, I met this lovely Swedish girl, 27 years old. We got a place. And for the last two years, I've had the wildest, most erotic sex two and three times a day, every day for the last two years. <laughs> the police officer said, then why are you crying? The old man said, I forgot where we live. <laughs> This rabbi and priest are on the aircraft. The stewardess goes over to the rabbi. May I get you a drink after takeoff? The rabbi said, I'd like a tall scotch and soda, but it's fist. She said, fine. She approached the priest. Father, can I get you a drink after takeoff? The priest was quite indignant. He said, young lady, before I would allow alcohol to pass through these lips, I would rather commit adultery. The rabbi said, hold my order. I didn't know we had a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't born here, but I'm sure as hell gonna die unless I catch this sucker. <laughs> you better laugh up there. Remember, Lincoln got it in the box. <laughs> this lady was as excited as any woman had ever been. She was so excited, she was beside herself. She's flitting around the house with an energy level unlike anything the husband had ever seen. He finally stops her. He said, would you be good enough to tell me what you're so excited about? She said, sweetheart, you know what the doctor said to me today? He said, I had the breasts of an 18-year-old. He said, really? What do you say about your 45-year-old ass? <laughs> she said, your name never came up. <laughs> One more. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. You folks are watching the Kane Mutiny. <laughs> it's wintertime. It's Buffalo, New York. It's cold. It's 62 degrees below zero. A man is in his home and there's a knock at the door. He goes to the door. He opens the door. On the porch is a snail. The snail looks up and says, it's really very cold out. And I hope you don't mind, but I just have to come in. I won't bother no one to eat anything. Could I just sit in the corner? And the man kicked the snail clear across the lawn and shut the door. Two years pass. <laughs> There's a knock at the door. The man goes to the door, opens the door. On the porch is a snail. The snail looks up at him and he says, what the hell was that all about? I was supposed to be finished now. <laughs> okay, drum roll. Aha! <laughs> and in the aisles I'd lay them with arson and with mayhem. It was a hammy routine, but it always played and my favorite on was the Hundred Years War. <laughs> Those were the good old days. I gladly sailed the seven seas for just one reprise of those good 
in my entire life. I swear by everything I hold sacred that I've never known of Shifty McCoy and that I'm not that man. Honest to God, I'm not! One to mince words. At least where guilt was concerned. Still, if he was unable to produce a social security card or any identification whatsoever, which moved team owner Adam Welsh to... For dismissal! Because in spite of Joe's little identification problem, there's not one shred of concrete evidence against him. But here's today's mail from our front office from youngsters all over the country who do believe in Joe Hardy. Mm. It's like miracle on 34th Street down there. Now somebody better come up with some legitimate testimony because we've got a baseball game to win tonight and we mean business. No ifs, ands, or... But his threat had minimal effect on the hearing, which dragged on into the afternoon until team manager Betty Van Buren, with one eye on the clock, made one of his usual calm and level-headed suggestions. Why don't you just shoot me? I mean, what is this all of a sudden? I let three lie. Yeah! Look, Commissioner, I got some high sun ball players here that are going to have to leave for the stadium right now if we intend to show up against those Yankees tonight. And it would be just nifty if I could take my star player here with me. Unless, of course... You happen to have a couple of bucks of your own on those damn... Yanks from the hearing just before contempt charges were pressed. Van Buren and his team were sadly not present for the surprise witness. Who appeared early in the evening and had presented herself to the commission as the so-called wife of Shifty McCoy. Senor McCoy claimed to have arrived from Cancun on nine different buses in order to testify that her husband was a lout, a no good pachuco who left me in a cantina in El Paso waiting for Jimmy John to take us. <laughs> While he ran off to Guadalajara with some two-bit no-good gringa putana. <laughs> Whatever. But without substantiation of Senor McCoy's citizenship, marriage, address, age, or hair color, the only valid and responsible testimony seemed to come from sports reporter Gloria Thorpe. Dressed in a simple silk, Shandong suit, her hair impeccably sleek, her manner the epitome of savvy, sophisticated, sang You like it? I do. <laughs> anyway, although her accusations discussed the sale of the hearing, she smartly deferred to the man who she claims had discovered Joe Hardy, and who even first mentioned Shifty McCoy to me. Clearly, if you subpoena him, you'll get to the bottom of this and we can all go home. And by the way, if anyone cares, it's now the top of the fourth inning, and the score is four to nothing, Yankees. Oh. So, that is where today's hearing grounds to a halt. For although Mr. Rappelgate was found and arrived shortly before eight o'clock, he seemed somehow unable to testify. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Who? Um, please, Mr. Applegate. Please. You don't have another version of that oath, do you? Don't do this to me, Mr. Applegate. Please don't. I know what you're doing. No matter what I do, you'll outlast me. You'll stall until 9 o'clock. It's come and gone. Please. Not for me, for the team. Let me get to the game. Let me help them. You could make an exception just this once. I? But, Joe, this has nothing to do with me at all. You're the one insisting on this idiotic escape clause, and just when the Yankees are leading, for nothing, is it? I've got to help the guys before I go back to Meg. I've just got to! My, you're conflicted. You just have to have everything, don't you? What you need is a nice, quiet place to think this over, and I know just where you can go. Please, be my guest. <laughs>
been looking all over for you. Are you all right? Oh, God, how can I be? I'm going back to Meg, but what about the guys? I'm about to let them down in the worst way. No matter what I do, someone gets hurt. I'm so miserable, I can't move. No, Joe. That's what Applegate wants. Look, you've been reinstated. They cleared your name. Do you think you could still hit a ball like you did yesterday? Until nine, I guess so, but what possible difference Joe, make? Joe, you there? It's only 8.30. You still have half an hour to play ball like you've never played before. Like your life depended on it. My life? Well, your soul, then. What is this, Marlboro country? Hurry, before he finds you. What about you? You know, I had a really great time at your benefit. The benefit, I'm sorry. No kidding. There may be something to all this helping business. Who knows? Now go. Lola, you're more to me than just a Never friend. Never mind, so. Maybe some other eternity. And remember, like your soul depended on it. Joe, Joe, is that you, Joe? Oh, Lola, have you seen Joe? Uh, Joe, Joe Hardy? No, Shecky Hickey, of course Joe Hardy. Why? What's he doing here? Well, I tied him up in knots, no pennant for him, and with one more little dollop of despair, no wife either. What are you doing here? Why? Where are we? Look, this is limbo. Limbo. Wow, what do you think of that? I haven't been here since Socrates' bachelor party. <laughs> I used to come all the time. Okay. Anyway, let's get going. As soon as I nail Joe, we're going to work that final game. Three in a minute. Sit, will you? Sit? We've got 40,000 souls sitting in Griffith Stadium just right for the picking. This is no time to rest. Ah! Give yourself a break, will you? I have never met anyone who worked so hard in all my life. You've been up since dawn, spitting, cursing, condemning. You must be exhausted. Yeah, I am a little. It's a killer schedule, actually. Who are all those couples over there? Oh, we have all the famous lovers of history here in Limbo. That's Romeo and Juliet over there. That's Tristan and Isolde over there. Paolo and Francesca. Well, who's that? J. Edgar Hoover and Clyde Tolson. But they aren't dead yet. I know. I just can't wait. <laughs> and us? The lost soul? You know, Lola, I'm not sure that I actually ever had a soul. Anyway, according to Milton, I fall into a much higher category. Milton? What does he know? Some guy on television in a dress. Skip it. Come on, Chief. I'm being romantic. You are. You're one of a kind. We're two of a kind, and you are good, Lola. You're not so bad yourself. Oh, yes, I am. Two lost souls. On the highway of life, we ain't even got a sister or brother. But ain't it just great? Ain't it just grand? We got each other. Two lost ships on a storm we see. One with no sail and one with no rudder. But ain't it just great? Ain't it just grand? We got each other to the sheep in the wilds of the hills, far from the other Jacks and Jill. We wandered away and went astray, but we ain't fussing cause we got us and we're two lost souls on the highway of life, and there is no one with whom we would rather say ain't a just Ain't it just grand? We got each other. Wherever we go, whatever we do, as long as you got me and I got you, we got a lot. Because we got each other.
Bottom of the ninth inning of the score, the Yankees four, Washington three. One out, and Henry Anderson holding at first base. And stepping up to the plate, number 28, Vernon Hollingsworth. There's a drive going to deep center field. Mickey Mantle racing back. He's digging for that ball. He reaches up. He's got it. Anderson tagging up at first base. He's going to try for second. Here comes the throw from Mantle, and Anderson slides in. He's safe at second. That puts Henry Anderson in scoring position, Mel. You wouldn't have seen the Senators try something that gutsy at the beginning of this season, that's for sure. What's happening? What inning is it? Bottom of the ninth. Sit down. How's it going? Fantastic. We're still alive. Two-way tie run on second. We've got a shot. By God, we've got a shot. <laughs> How can that be without Joe? What's the time? Doesn't anybody have a watch? No wonder the Republicans are in office. Five before nine. Come on, boys! How's Joe doing? He's playing like an angel. Wait till you see. I cannot believe we are this late. Do you realize we could have missed the whole game? Oh, come on, Chief. We were having fun. You were great. Yeah? Killer. Promise. <laughs> Two away in the bottom of the ninth, and stepping up to the plate, shoeless Joe Hardy! What's he doing here? I thought, wait just a minute. Wait one second. Last time at bat, which was his first appearance here tonight, Hardy blasted that fastball into the second deck and brought the score to Yankees four, Senators three. He did what? He's not supposed to be Come here. On, He's not supposed to be here. Joe. You listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Have you lost your mind? I don't know what came over me. Sit down. The pitcher's into the windup. Around comes the left arm. Here comes the pitch. <laughs> A blazing fastball, high and inside. Hardy never saw it. What was that? You don't think I'm going to let real estate triumph, do you? Two away. The count is 0-1. Whitey Ford, two pitches away from this crucial Yankee win. Rookie Hardy, shoeless Joe, just one swing away from clinching the greatest comeback in baseball history. And here's the windup. The pitch. <laughs> It's all in the wrist. No. What's the time? What's the time? No, 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 no. no tricks, you promised. No, 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 no. Stay and win. No, no, no. Win everything. No, no. Or check second. No, no, no. Throw it. Nine. No. He's mine. Let me go. No. The pitcher's set. And here's the windup. The pitch. It's a high fly ball to deep right field. It may go foul. Nope, by God, no. It's fair. It's fair. Oh, my Lord, it's a home run. Washington wins it. Washington wins the pennant. Oh, gosh, I have...
haven't even started our supper yet. I was just listening. Oh! I'm back. Joe! Oh, my God! Joe! Oh! Oh! Where in hell have you been? Why didn't you call? Don't mention hell. Just don't ever ask me, please. What are you talking about? How can I not know? Maybe, please. I can't ever go into it. You've just got to trust me. That's asking a lot. You know that, don't you? When have I not asked a lot of you? I love you, Meg. Oh, my old boy. I love you, too. You don't know how I miss you. I bet I do. Joe, I think I'd like to see the series, honestly. And I think I'd like to learn bridge. And I think I'd like to throw up. Bridge? Are you not... Are you all right, Joe? I'm not sure. I'm suddenly not sure. All right, Joe, you owe me something, remember? Is something wrong? Say things to me. Things about us. We've had a little joke, but we've got some unfinished business, you and I. Hold me, Meg. Quick, put your arms around me and don't let me go no matter what. Listen, Joe. That was a mean trick I pulled on you in the stadium tonight. I just lost my head for a moment. Oh, fool me. Don't know what she has until she loses. Joe, I'll make amends, okay? You can show up for the series. You can be Joe Hardy again. You'll play the greatest series baseball has ever seen, I promise you. Joe, Joe, I'm really not emotionally unstable once you get to know me, Joe. Lola, why isn't this working? I don't know, Chief. It's beyond me. Maybe it's the real thing. There's no such thing as the real thing, I tell you. There's no such thing as real love. Listen to me, Joe. I'm not going to stand for any of your real estate shenanigans. Do you hear me? Listen to me, you white, loving louse. You belong to me. You... 